What do you think about this match against Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, obviously, very important match. Uh, we know uh, what's at stake uh, with this uh, this game for sure. Uh, you know, coming out of the disappointment uh, with the Jamaica, we get another opportunity here uh, to win, to 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 perform well, and to uh, uh, have that opportunity to play in Copa America. So uh, for us, uh, we're super excited. We had a good week of training. We got one more training left. Uh, there's a good spirit. There's a good energy in the group. And for us, uh, now it's about executing uh, tomorrow. Stephen? Yeah, um, to be honest, we know that, that we're going to have a, a tough time tomorrow. Uh, they're a team as well that are very hungry. Uh, they want to make it to Copa America as well. But, you know, they have a strong Canada that they're going to face. And I think we have everything to, to go through. First question. I have with you. Stefan, haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. Um, take, talking to Tejon and Alfonso and Maxime yesterday, uh, they called Jamaica an eye opener. Um, what, what would, did you take from that loss? And in your position uh, for this camp, what kind of leadership have you tried to provide for a younger group? It was eye opener. Yeah, I think uh, we thought. We had them, especially after that first half where everything went went well. Um, but to be honest, they they showed more that they were more hungry than us, and they they wanted to to qualify first. So I mean, we have to get the humbleness back. Uh, we have to be more hungry, as I said before, and just like think about our past and the way that we made it to the to the world cup you know we had always that desire to to be first and i think that we liked that last game so um i mean we're ready tomorrow uh, i can tell you that and about um the second question i'm just gonna be me uh that's why that's why um i'm gonna be the captain um it's just because um maru, maru saw that that the way that i that I go through camps and to go through training and in, in, in the game, uh, I just lead by by my personality. So I'm just going to be myself, and that's the easy task. And Maro, just as a follow-up to that, I know there are players who went up to you and asked you to consider them to be captain. Why did you pick Steph? I think Steph, uh, he ticks all the boxes. Uh, I think when you... You look at his career and what he's gone through, uh, you know, he, he joined Canada here uh, four or five years ago. He's been able to grow uh, in this team. Uh, he's experienced the World Cup. He's playing at the highest levels in Champions League. And then, uh, you know, there's a calmness about Steph that I like and that I think uh, will be extremely important in a game like this. And uh, he leads by example. He's someone that has the respect of the group. And yes, uh, you know, there's there's other leaders and other leaders that uh, are in this team, and and for sure, it's it's an opportunity for a lot of these uh, players to step up in those roles and now lead in their way, and and I think that's important. And and uh, you know, we've made changes to to give this space to some of these young guys now to step up, and uh, this will be an important game for us to now. Uh, you know, see how our leaders react in these types of moments, but at the same time, uh, you know, prepping them for the for the future. Uh, hi, Mato Archbell with CONCACAF.com. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been 24 years since Canada last played Trinidad and Tobago in, in an official CONCACAF match. Um, certainly the 2000 Gold Cup semifinal is a great memory, I know, for a lot of, of Canada fans. Kind of, you were, I know you were part of those Canada teams leading up to that. I think your final Canada match was actually against Trinidad that same year. So when you think about Canada versus Trinidad and Tobago, the memories of that 2000 Gold Cup semifinal, um, you playing against them, what what are the things that come to mind? Yeah, I think, uh, look, this is, uh, you know, we've seen their, their performances and, uh, you know, against the U.S., those were tough games. And uh, they were able to, uh, you know, frustrate an American team away, uh, you know, a man down for more than 80 minutes. Uh, so you're going to see that fighting spirit of a group of players uh, that, uh, you know, are like uh, like Steph said, that are hungry. They're, you know, they're going to be able to close spaces, be physical. They're going to bring that. And 
And I think, uh, you know, for us, uh, yeah, those are those will be some of our challenges that we're going to face versus uh, versus Trinidad. But for sure, this coach has done a good job. Uh, he's got he's got the mentality right there because they're pushing. They're in a lot of games, and even even before that, you know, they would be able to score goals late and and, and come back in their different uh, their different games in the lead up. But uh, we saw we saw a bunch of players that are focused and uh, ready to to give everything for their country. So for, for us, we, we need to be ready for that. Uh, hey, guys. Steph, uh, Rash Madani from Sportsnet. You made the point, I'm just going to be me. I don't think a lot of Canadian fans really know what that means. When you say, I'm just going to be me from a leadership standpoint, how do you go about that? What, what, is, what, kind of, what is that heartbeat? What makes you tick? It's just the the feeling that you know whenever I come to camp and training and whatever I like to organize things and I like to to you know to make my team feel comfortable. Uh, even when we transition from a formation to another, I'm just that vocal guy that always tries to help uh, my friends, my colleagues, uh, give my opinion to the coach. Either if I'm if I'm missing something or not, if the team is well or not, uh, it's just that. And I really like I, like Mauro said. My colleagues respect me, and I think it's just because the way I am, because of my education of my my father, my mother, my brother. So, uh, as Maru said before, there's a lot of uh, captains, a lot of people that are going to lead our group. It's just an arm armband, and, and I feel that tomorrow uh, we we're going to need more than one player to to organize the team. But it's just that it's just the education that my family gave to me. Uh, I'm just that guy that really likes to to help everybody and. I'm going to continue that way. And just as a follow-up, this is a younger group. What have you just noticed about the team dynamic that's different in 2024 than the last couple of years? There's a foundation there. Uh, I think we got some freshness in our group as well because uh, a lot of the players that are young, uh, they want to be here, so they have to you know, conquer their spot. And we're here to help the older guys. I'm 27, I'm still young, but I'm one of the oldest guys in the squad. So, I mean, we're just... We're all with the same vision. Uh, it's to to qualify for Copa America. We know we're gonna have we're gonna have a, a strong team. We're gonna play against tomorrow, but it's just that help the help the younger guys. Um, it doesn't matter if you play in Europe, MLS, whatever. Uh, we're here to represent Canada, and we only have one goal: is to qualify. Yeah. Christian Jaguar soccer staff. Uh, as a follow up, um, I'd like to ask you about your partner in midfield, Ismail Kone, because obviously tomorrow you wear the armband, but you've been mentoring players for a while now. What's it like to play with him? And when you come back to play with a player like that, who's been playing regularly now at his club, what have you seen the difference from the last camp to now with him? I think he's a baller. Um, I think he leads in his own way of playing. Uh, and when I say that, because he's he, only, he always wants the ball, he always wants to dictate the tempo and all that. Um, he's been growing, uh, but it's easy as a, like a player like him, he's, he's humble and he knows how to listen. And, and, and that's the first step to be a better player. And he's a good person as well. So I'm very happy to, to share the pitch with him. And I mean, he has a bright, bright future with Canada and, you know, I see a big future for him, even in the Premier League. And this is just a beginning of a very big and good story for him. Thank you. And Maro, just to follow up, you mentioned earlier all the qualities that Steph has as a captain um, that give, obviously, the benefit to Canada on the field. What about as a coach? How important is it as a coach that you have leaders like Steph that you can trust during those difficult moments that may come tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that was part of our, our conversation, uh, you know, uh, when I announced to him that he'd be the captain and it's about that trust and building that that relationship and uh, you know we've had a relationship uh in the past but now it's you know coach rather than assistant coach so for me uh having someone like Steph to be able to bounce things off of him you know get a feel of the group from him through him uh I think it's extremely important I think uh you know, and, but for him also to understand that I have to make certain decisions. There's there's 23 other players there, but getting that feedback for sure is quite helpful. And and yeah, and, and there's there's been you know moments even this week in training where you know we you know we have a little moment where he'd say, hey, what do you think about this? And 
And those are things uh, that are important to have that relationship with the captain to be able to adjust and adapt to, to sit certain things uh, within a game. So we, it's all part of the process. It's all part of building that relationship and, and that trust that we'll have. John Arnold from the Getting Conquer Couch newsletter. Tomorrow, from the outside looking in, it seems like there's been some tumultuous moments for Canada since the World Cup. You said the spirits are high in the camp. Totally trust you. What have you done to kind of foster that atmosphere and make sure the focus is on the 90 minutes tomorrow that could give you that, that ticket to Copa America and not on some of the external things that have been kind of floating for, for years now? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's, it was difficult 2023 for sure. Uh, I think uh, we, we all know uh, some of the things, some of the things that happened. Obviously, there's a coaching change late in, in the year. Uh, you know, uh, a full staff taken, uh, you know, so these are all some of the challenges that, uh, you know, that we had to, to deal with. And and for me, closing off that year was, you know, being loyal to some of the guys and and, and that were there that have gone through it. And then uh, you know, uh, taking on that group to qualify and, and to perform it, it, you know, it wasn't the outcome, uh, based on, on that Jamaica series. And for me, it's about, uh, a new beginning. Uh, and I think we need to detach ourselves from, uh, the past and, and that was that journey. And, and now it's a new one. And I think this is, uh, this is the direction I want to take the group. Uh, there's some changes that were made. Uh, there's some young players that have now entered the group and given the opportunity who have, who have merited this, this opportunity. And, and I think uh, it's about living now an important game like this to be able to move on to the next step. And, and I think that's, that's the mindset. And for sure, you know, uh, I talked about be a good teammate. I talked about Canada first. I think these are the types of things that I want to instill in the group and, and that humility that we did have, right? We did have that humility, but it kind of like, you know, fell through over the last year and a bit. So now it's about getting back to that, having our, our leaders that have been there to now transmit that to the young guys and then the young guys to just absorb, absorb and then take their opportunities as we go forward. Joshua Cloak, the athletic. Tomorrow, what's important tactically for you tomorrow? Yeah, I think, look, it's going to be, you know, these will be tricky games uh, for sure. Uh, and if I look at the blueprint versus the USA, you saw how they were able to, you know, uh, sit in a low block. So we have to be ready to, to unbalance a low block uh, and be able to now spread them out for sure, but then exploit some of the gaps essentially as they now start to adjust. So uh you know we got to be ready for their counterattacks. Uh, this could be a game where you know we may have a uh, possession but we have to be ready in those moments that when we do turn over the ball that we have the right tactics to protect that and at the same time uh, we got to make those plays so for us it's it's uh, it's been a week of working on these types of things and how uh you know you're playing against a team that's going to close space a team that's going to be physical a team team that uh will be direct and and now it's about being prepared for those moments. Steph, one word we don't hear anymore around this team is brotherhood. Can you kind of outline what are some of the new philosophies or overarching kind of themes with this team that, that you want to bring to the forefront? Brotherhood was a very strong, strong word for us in, in, in the past. Uh, I think we really we're a team that you know connected well. We were brothers, and we still are. We still are. But we're in a we're in a different in a different era, uh, as Mauro said. And I think uh, it's all about Canada first. You know, we always put Canada in first. Uh, there's no individualities here. It's Canada first, and it's winning. Uh, I think we have the team to do that. Uh, we have fresh players as well, as I said before. Tomorrow is going to be a good test. Um, it's hard to come from the clubs and you know change a little bit the habits here. Uh, but we're ready and we, we, we're going to depend on a lot of players that, you know, are in very good teams and we're going to depend on a lot of players that are here for the first time, but we're going to need them as well, you know, for that energy in the second half. So it is what it is. I think uh, Canada first is, is, you know, some good words for, for, for the next times. Yeah. We are going to start now with some virtual questions. Nicolas Landry. Oui, salut Mauro, Nicolas André de RDS. Uh, J'espère que tu vas bien. Nicolas. Uh, deux petits questions. Oui. Est-ce que vous... We are going with you now, yeah? And we... Allô? We come back with Virtual. Steph, just to build on that point, um, 
there is so much talent now in this team, especially in the players that are playing in Europe. So this is for both of you. How disappointing would it be if Canada doesn't take this opportunity and move on to the Copa America? Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, to be honest, we have to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, there's no room for disappointment. There's just room for improvement, and we're going to qualify um, tomorrow. I think it, it meant a lot. Uh, you know, that that loss against Jamaica, you know, in my conversations, different conversations, you know, with, with Alfonso and some of the other players, and and just how disappointed and how much I hurt that that performance. And, uh, and for them, they... You know, we lived it now, and they know they know what that moment felt like. And for them, uh, it's about now not making that moment happen again, and and doing what we need to do. And and look, it's it's football. We all know that. Uh, we watched the game yesterday, USA Jamaica, and in the last play, right, uh, the last play of the game. Uh, so anything can happen, uh, but we have to be ready. We have to continue to now be resilient in moments, right? We know we have talented players. We know uh, that we have, uh, you know, the ability to, to, to play against anybody. And, and, but there's also that mindset that has to be strong that when there is a difficult moment that we have to be able to manage it. And, uh, you know, if you think of the Americans, they stayed on task, however difficult it was, they stayed on task to the end of the, the game and and ended up winning it in the in the last play there and with the tie and then taking it in uh, in overtime. So, look in these types of games, yeah, it's it's you know it's it's a one off, right? So there'll be a team across from us that's going to be hungry. They're going to want to do everything they can, and you know we have to have that composure and that execution uh, in the end. We come back with virtual questions, Nicholas Landry. Hello, Mauro, est-ce que tu m'entends bien cette fois-ci? Oui. <rire> All right. Excuse-moi pour tantôt. Euh, ben, en français, j'aurais aimé t'entendre peut-être euh, sur la nomination de Steven comme capitaine, juste comment tu l'as euh, annoncé au groupe, comment ça a été reçu aussi parmi le groupe. Puis, euh, deuxième question, euh, peut-être sur Moïse Bombito, un Québécois qu'on qu apprend à connaître de plus en plus ici, il y a un bon début de saison à MLS. Mm -hmm. euh, Qu'est-ce que tu aimes chez lui, puis comment tu le vois évoluer euh, dans le groupe, euh, tu sais, dans le futur, à quelle position tu, tu le vois euh, évoluer, puis être à son mieux dans, dans ton groupe? Merci. OK. Uh, avec la première question, je veux... Okay. Je... Sorry. In English, please. Oh, after in English. Yeah, please. OK. Thank so, you. I'll translate. He asked me uh, the conversation with, uh, with Steph and uh, about the captaincy. And uh, for me, uh, obviously, I've been in contact with Steph and a lot of some of the other leaders uh, prior to this camp. Uh, remotely, uh, we've been able to uh, discuss and talk about certain things and how we could improve this team. And and from there, uh, you know, uh, I started to formalize uh, my thinking, um, you know, and felt that Steph would be a, a good candidate for for this for this role. Uh, and then uh, had the conversation in camp. I told him uh, at the beginning of camp, and you know, and like I said, you know, you, Steph uh, he ticks all the boxes in terms of his leadership. Uh, he's a guy that has a lot of respect within the group, and uh, I announced it to the group on the field because that's where Steph is at his best and most comfortable is on that field to show how he could lead by example. And uh, you know, a lot of the players they they applauded him, and uh, he's he's a guy that's uh, well liked within the group. Um, but at the same time, I also had the discussions with uh, a lot of key guys that, you know, uh, that uh, are stepping up in, in this uh, leadership role, with, uh, which become very important for us uh, as we move forward. Uh, the other question was about Moises Bombiro. Uh, Moises, uh, yes, from, uh, from Quebec. And um, I think he's had a really good start to the season. Uh, I think it's a player that has a high ceiling. Uh, he brings qualities uh, on the ball. Uh, he's he has uh, obviously um, uh, physicality. Uh, you know that uh, is very important. Uh, I think with with Moyes, it's about gaining experience. Uh, you know, gaining experience, continuing also to play regularly at, at Colorado. Uh, this is now he's gotten he's won that starting role this year. Uh, but it's definitely a player that we see for the future, and it's important that we have him here inside the group, gaining experience with us and, and growing. One more with Neil Davidson. 
Thank you. Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. First of all, Stefan, congratulations on the captaincy. Mauro, just to clarify, uh, is Stefan the uh, captain from now on or is it just for this game? Uh, it's just for this game right now. That's uh, what's the most important. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, Steph is, is a leader, uh, a leader within this group. Uh, the future, for sure, uh, you know, in my situation and every, you know, and, and the teams uh, is not something that we we want to look at right now. We want to get through this game. And uh, for sure, with Steph, uh, he has all the qualities, uh, all the qualities to continue, all the qualities uh, to be that leader that we need. Uh, but like I said, for this game, uh, for sure, we needed uh, his experience uh, to help us through it and his calmness and, and everything else that he brings uh, to take us uh, through. And then, um, you know, and then we'll see. We'll see how things uh, unfold as we go forward. The last one, please, for Jeremy Filosa. Jeremy. Okay. We are going with Andrew Jones. Thank you very much. Um, Andrew Jones from Believe Network. Congratulations to you, Stefan, on being captain for this game. And on the club level, you've seen the captaincy of Pepe for your side. Can you talk about the type of leader he is and the most fun story that you've had with him and whether you've given him and Pepe um, different names to identify with how they both have the same name. And uh, Mauro, just for what you've seen from Luke De Rogas in this camp and also what you view Levy Garcia as a player on Trinidad. Everybody knows Pep. Um, 41 years old. Forty-one years old athlete that you know just performed against Arsenal. Did one of the best games of of his career. I think um, he's a top, top, top uh, player, top athlete as well, um, and a captain. He he really shows us the way uh, with all the experience he has in the Champions League and all the the championships he's he's won. I think he's a really eye opener, and I think um, try to follow his steps, you know, to to lead this team and and and. To try to play out <laughs> until 41 is going to be a hard one, but but it's possible. It's possible because I've, I've I, I, I see it every day in my club. Um, I think he's a he's a a very good guy, and like me, he leads he leads by example. Um, there's not no funny story with me and him. I think uh, he's just a very professional and serious guy, and we can see because he's he's top every weekend. Yeah, so I'll start with Luke again. Luke, uh, again, a uh, very good camp uh, in, in terms of now him already showing signs that he's growing more comfortable. Uh, you see that in its play. Uh, again, it's another player with a high ceiling, in my opinion. Uh, he's here to continue to gain experience. Uh, if the opportunity arises uh, to get in the game, uh, for sure, we'll, we'll be looking at that. Uh, but again, super happy how he's uh, continued to progress uh, at such a young age. Um, you know, he brings a certain physicality that you see how primed he is and training every day with Premiership players. Uh, so that was uh, impressive to see how in just six months he's he's gotten physically even stronger, uh, and and you see that part of his development. Uh, Levy Garcia, yeah, he's a striker with Trinidad. Uh, we've been watching him. Uh, we've been preparing those video packages for for the group, and and it's a player that's doing extremely well in uh, in the Greece first division uh, with Ike. Uh, he's he's on a, a really hot uh, tear right now, scoring goals uh, for them. It's a it's a player that. Uh, that brings his ability to beat you on the dribble, his ability to outpower you, his ability to shoot, his ability to pass. So it's a, it's a really good player uh, that we definitely need to uh, pay special attention to. Thank you very much, Coach. Stephen, thank you. Recording stopped. We conclude with this press conference. Thanks, guys.